everybody, it's Kaylin here at Full Purpose and Heart, and today I want to show you how I set up the Good and the Beautiful Space Unit, which is the Space Science Unit. Mm -hmm. She has lots of science units. This is just the one of the few that I'm going to select for our first grade year. Um, as many of you have probably been watching, The Good and the Beautiful is a fairly new curriculum that has come out, and so there's lots of mamas out there who are showing you what is out there and available. Jenny Phillips is the creator of it, and she also does a really good job giving you a good preview on her website, so I would encourage you to go over there if you haven't already and see all of the good stuff that she has going on with The Good and the Beautiful. So I've selected the science unit and I just wanted to show you how I set it up um, it's a little bit different than what some other mamas are doing so just to see if it kind of helps you out if you haven't seen the science section I went ahead and coil bound this because I just got myself a coil binder and I'm coil binding everything because it's just so fun um, just like all of her other units this is really thick sturdy paper it's really glossy it's really pretty so she has a really good product that she's created here um, here is the units there are 16 lessons they can be done in any time frame. She doesn't give you like um, a time frame that you're going to want to do with your unit. So you get to decide how long you want to spend on each unit. Um, but it goes from out broad with the solar system, starting with the sun. Each of the planets is included. And then she talks about the moons. Um, she has a little bit of history involved when she talks about the history of astronomy and Galileo. And then she has three sections where we're talking about space exploration the history of space exploration and the space science station is one of them. So anyway, and then she finishes with constellations. So it's a really good overview for a young age. And then she also, like her other units, has some good um, extended learning for those who are in older grades. Um, this is just like her other science units. She has the same kind of setup here. Um, all of the units that she used includes a science journal. And I'm gonna show you what I did with my science journal here in just a minute. Um, a science wall, which will include all of the words that you're gonna be using. Many, many lesson books. I have those up here. I'll show you those in just a moment. Um, she has a lesson preparations page and then some versions for or teaching older children. The versions here, she just talks about how she um, is not going to necessarily do updates to the curriculum. You do not get free updates as the curriculum changes, um, but she's not exp um, planning to change the curriculum that much. So um, here is your scope with all of the supplies based on each of the lessons as you go through. So it's really nice because at the beginning of the school year, you can, or even like during the summer, you can just collect all of your stuff and put it in a bin so that you always know where all of your supplies are. Um, okay, so here's just a quick overview if you haven't seen. Again, JennyPhillips.com is where you can find the curriculum, and she has really good sample pages that you can go through so you can see how her um, lessons are set up. But in bold, it talks about what you want to do with the children. She has bold read to the children if you, you know, really want a specific of what you're going to talk about. These are your... Um, what are they called? Vocabulary words. So you have the vocabulary cards, more questions that you can talk with the students. Um, when it, there's something to do in the science journal, she has that bolded here in this particular unit. It is in green. Uh, planet cards are, I'll show you those planet cards in just a minute, but we kind of go through the planet cards with the students so that they can memorize the planets and the order that they're in, that sort of thing. Another vocabulary word, vocabulary word. And then just a quick sample, she has really great illustrations in, um, I've included them in my lesson plan so that I can turn to those illustrations when I want to, okay? So here's some more, um, these are actually photographs of the space, it's whatever, what's it called, Monarchia, I think is how you would say it. Anyway, that's when we talk about the stars. Um, here's a, a sample of the red planets, giant planets, white dwarfs. So she has like really good illustrations in there, which are kind of fun to have as a part. We're going to talk about creators. This is a fun little science project that she includes where you make, this is like red cake mix mixed with some baby oil. And then your student can drop some pebbles in there and you can see kind of how a crater is made. That sort of thing. We're talking about the moon's phases here. This is the answer sheet. I'm going to show you what I did for our space journal in just a moment. Oops. 
Okay, so you kind of get an idea as I quickly flip through these pages. Um, oh, here's another science project you're gonna do where you're gonna create kind of the gassy uh, moon that's on Venus, I think. Lesson 12. Okay, so here's the history. This is Galileo. It actually has uh, quite a bit of text that you're going to be reading about the solar system. And um, history of space travel, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so this is about um, living on the moon or on Mars and why it would be difficult to do that. Here's some facts about the International Space Station for a game. Um, some pictures of the International Space Station, some constellations, and here's another uh, STEM. This is actually a STEM project that you can do with your students, and this has several different um, science projects that you can do. Okay, so let me show you my space journal that I made. I was really actually excited about the space journal, so let me show you. This is the science journal again, and she talks about how all of the good and the beautiful have them and you could put them in a binder and it's all this like great stuff and I was super excited about it. So then when I went through the curriculum, I didn't really feel like there was that much information that I could pull from the curriculum to put into the space journal, excuse me, the science journal. So anyway, so I made my own. Okay, so this goes along with each of the lessons and I've put it in an order that each of the planets are gonna have their own thing and then the vocabulary. So let me show you really quick what I've got here. So this is when we look at Mauna Kea and we kind of talk about that space station, one of the things she suggests is to watch a YouTube video about Mauna Kea and then I'm gonna have my student draw a picture of it and just wrote, write down some things that he recognizes or that he likes about it, okay? Here we talk about the difference between Copernicus and Johann Kepler and what Copernicus thought about our solar system and how Johann and Kepler kind of changed the idea about how we're on orbits. Here we're gonna learn about five different um, topics or facts about the sun. Um, this is when we do that space, the Mars crater, where we drop the rocks into the cake mix. So this is gonna be a picture of what that, I'm gonna have him draw it, and then he's gonna talk, we'll just kind of like reflect on the project. Here we're talking about the moon, five facts we learn about the moon. Here's my picture of the moon's phases. I just kind of made a little different one than she included in the curriculum. And this is uh, another phases of the moon so that we can go out into our yard and track the phases of the moon throughout the course of one month. So this is a gravity science project that I kind of just duplicated for something that I saw on the internet. So we will drop each of these items at the same time, see which one falls first, talk about mass and how items with greater mass um, have gravity pulls them down faster. I created this. This is just a picture I got off the internet. My son will color this while I read him the Galileo um, text. It just seemed kind of long, so I wanted something for my son's hands to keep him busy. And then this is also about Galileo and some major scientific accomplishments. This actually comes from her curriculum. I just copied it onto some um, paper so that it could be part of my book here, and it would be the same kind of paper. Um, I created this. Uh, part of the curriculum asks that the student can write down in their science journal up to five or more of the um, space exploration stuff that you talked about and then the timeline. So I just, since mine's a first grader, I gave him four. He can draw a little picture of it or write about it and then we'll put the years in the boxes below. Um, and then when we talk about the space city on either moon, the moon or Mars, I'll have him draw a picture of it and give me three reasons why it's hard to live there. Okay. These are my planet cards. Now, as a part of the curriculum, Jenny has um, made like a little pocket where you can have little pieces that you put in there. These are all of the planets, and then I just put a little tab on here. And this is my planet fact sheet. I made mine a full eight and a half by 11 page. She just made hers little cards. They're about half a page, and then you can stick them inside the pocket. And I just decided I wanted to do it this way. So we illustrate the planet, we name the planet, we write um, the ordinal position from the sun, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And then I'm gonna have my student um, draw, color it in. This is actually just something that I put on from the internet and put it on my page. These ones I got, I just pulled them off of her page and put them on my eight and a half by 11 page. So anyway, I have seven of these, all they, look, they all look the same. And then this is my vocabulary page. She talks about um, having your student define the vocabulary word and illustrate it. So I just made a space to illustrate the vocabulary word and a space where she, um, the student can define it. 
And then this one, when we talk about space rocks, I just put three on one page so we can tell the difference. And then we have meteor and meteorite as the part of the meteoroid. So um, that was there. And then I also just added some fun games kind of at the back. These are just two vocabulary games that go with his vocabulary system, okay? So a few other things I just wanna show you that are included in the curriculum here. These are pages that I've pulled out of um, the curriculum. It all came packaged together. So these are some space travel cards for the history of exploration. I will cut these out and laminate them so that we can talk about the order of space exploration. And I think that there's four pages to this six pages. Uh, this is a game that she's created. So you cut these out and then you kind of talk about the Milky Way and some different facts that go with that. And then here is my science wall. Again, I'll cut these out and laminate each of them so that we can tack them up to our um, board. So when we're talking about all of our different vocabulary words. Now you'll notice I have vocabulary words that are a part of my science wall that are not in my vocabulary section of my science notebook. That's just because um, Jenny didn't tell me to. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't in the curriculum to do it. And I just, these are just some additional words. I could have put them in there, but I just chose not to. So anyway, these are the planet cards. They're really nice, good color planet cards. I will laminate these and cut these apart so that we can then go through them every day and talk about each of the planets and the order they are from the sun. And then this was the, um, the page that goes with that moon for Neptune's moon, moon Triton, and how it's kind of like gassy and it's like a, it's like a um, project that you do with shaving cream. So anyway, so that's that one. And then these are the books that um, come with it. She has created these books. They were full pages, so I just cut them apart and then I comb bind them so that they can be all together, kind of like a book. And then we can go through and read these together. And as you can see, they've got really great pictures in them so that you can talk about it and really get a good idea about each of the planets. So you have one for the sun, <clears throat> Earth and Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, Mercury and Venus, Uranus and Neptune, and then Once Upon a Starry Night, the story of astronomy. And this is the story, um, I think, actually, that I'm going to read when they, my student does the um, <clears throat> solar system page. Not the long Galileo text, but this one. So he, I'll read this book here when he, while he colors this page. So anyway, so there you go. That's how I am setting up the good and the beautiful for our science section. I'm excited to get started, and my student is really excited to get started on it as well. As you can see, he's already colored the front of his journal, and my baby is starting to get a little vocal. So I'll hurry and turn this off, finish up before uh, things get kind of crazy over here. So hopefully you found this helpful. Anyway, have a great day, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.